All right, so hey there everybody, Andrew King here, Editor-in-Chief of Canadian Musician Magazine, and thanks for joining our latest in our uh, free webinar series from NWC Webinars. This one called, Are You Ready for a Music Publicist? And uh, in just a moment, I'm going to introduce our co-presenter here, who is a very prominent music publicist uh, with one of the biggest and most reputable firms in Canadian music. It's Jared Falk, National Publicity Manager for Killbeat Music. And uh, yeah, really excited to delve in here. Basically, we're going to be talking about uh, what a publicity campaign looks like, uh, how to find a good fit with the publicist, or what's expected of you, what's expected of a publicist in this ar uh, arrangement, and yeah, just give you some markers as to how to measure success. Even if you're not at that stage of your career yet, this is great information to have for when you inevitably get there. Uh, so we're really happy to have Jared joining us. Really quickly, uh, one of the first things, as those who have uh, joined us before for these that we always like to do, I'm just going to launch a quick poll here um, and invite you to tell us in which capacity you're involved in the music industry. Again, we use this just to, A, it will help steer our content for this session to a certain degree, but also just inform uh, the topics that we tackle moving forward. Uh, we want to make sure that we're delivering content that you want. And, I will appreciate, so appreciate the time. I'll hold this open for a few seconds while I go over a few other notes. In the handouts tab in your interface there, uh, you'll be able to access some documents, including a, a notepad style breakdown of the slideshow that you're gonna be seeing shortly. Uh, it just basically follows the talking points of our discussion, uh, but it's got some space next to each slide for note taking. So if you're an analog, paper and pencil type like I am, uh, feel free, take a minute, grab that, you can print it off uh, in good time before we start rolling here. Also, we encourage you to check out musicbooksplus.com slash webinar when you have a moment. Uh, there we've got three titles, basically uh, further reading for what we're going to cover here. So not exactly related to our topic, but uh, things to help you kind of branch out. Um, I'll show you what those titles are shortly, or you can jump there ahead of me if you'd like. And uh, yeah, because you joined us here, there's also a code to get 10% off of those titles or anything else in our uh, sister company, musicbooksplus.com's library. So I encourage you to check that out as well. And last thing to note, uh, we're gonna be pausing about partway through here in about 30 minutes or so for uh, some questions. It'll be a shorter question period, so we'll favor anything that's uh, topical to something that Jared's already spoken on. Uh, or timely. If we don't get to your question, then uh, don't worry about it because we'll open it up for a longer Q&A at the end. Uh, we'll have a bit more time and we'll be able to cast a wider net if there's anything you're curious about that we haven't covered. Um, yeah, so we've got just over 90% of attendees that have voted here. So we'll close the poll and I'll share with you just so you know uh, who else is in attendance this evening. So we've got about half uh, who are performing recording artists, which is great. Uh, thanks for joining us, industry professionals. Um, I wonder if any are music publicists wondering what we're gonna talk about. Uh, and a couple of behind the scenes songwriters as well. So welcome everybody. Really excited to have you. Let's get going here. Yeah, so are you ready for a music publicist? As I said, my name is Andrew King, Editor-in-Chief of Canadian Musician. Jared Falk, National Publicity Manager for Killbeat Music. Uh, I was not inflating their reputation when I mentioned them as one of the top in the country. Pretty much every year at the Junos, the Polaris Prize, uh, there are Killbeat clients among them, uh, some absolutely major artists, Broken Social Scene, uh, Shad, just a couple current ones that uh, that I work with Jared on. Uh, but it's a great roster, killbeatmusic.com. Calm, I think is it. I guess that's as good a time as any to uh, bring Jared into the fold. Jared, what's the URL? Uh, yeah, killbeatmusic.com. Nice. Uh, you are correct. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for joining us and for your patience while no uh, we got everything set up here. Um, so yeah, Jared's in the hot seat. What we're going to be covering in the first half, we'll bang off these first three points. We're going to just give a basic overview of what a publicity campaign entails. Um, after that, we'll talk about at what stage in your career should you be considering this as an avenue to help amplify your message uh, and drive your career forward. It's not for everybody. Um, there's a lot of this that you can kind of do on your own when you're starting out at the local regional level, but we'll get to that shortly. Uh, and then third, before the break, we're going to talk about finding the right fit. So Jared's going to help us, uh, speaking from his perspective, uh, on what makes for a good synergy between the artist and the publicist. And uh, a little hint here, it goes well beyond genre and style. Um, you know, that sometimes weighs in here, but 
in a lot of cases, uh, well, a company like Killbeat has a very, very diverse client list. So uh, after the break, we'll talk about what's expected of the artist in this type of arrangement, what's expected of the publicist, and to close it off, just some uh, tips for what a successful campaign looks like. When both parties come away uh, with the W, that's the win-win. That's what we're trying to get here. That's what Jared and, uh, well, many of his peers in the industry are going for. So here we go. Publicity Campaigns 101. Uh, Jared, I'm throwing this at you without warning, but if you can do it in one or two sentences, what's a publicist's job? Yeah, uh, I mean, a publicist's job is really to find um, a place in the media sphere for, I guess, you to gain attention. Um, and now that can look and you know look at a lot of different aspects. Uh, but I mean, for us specifically, we kind of cover uh, radio. We cover. Um, uh, blogs and and uh, music review sites and that kind of thing, but also magazines, uh, local newspapers, um, pretty much anyone where we can find a good fit where people might, you know, see your name and be enticed to come to a show or maybe even uh, pick up the music, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I guess a better question than what a typical campaign looks like is how would a campaign vary from artist to artist, maybe you can think of two kind of polar examples you've worked with in the past, but yeah, to what degree is it a, here's what you pay, here's what we do for you versus a sit down and, and tailoring a campaign to a specific artist or client? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different artists out there and a lot of different uh, campaigns that will work from one to the next. So uh, let's take an example. Um, if we've got a larger musician um, or a larger band that is going to be doing uh, kind of things all throughout the year. So let's say they've got an album, but they're also going to be touring kind of constantly throughout the year here and there, you know, some in spring, some some festivals in summer, some in fall, uh, then that would be more of a larger campaign and they would have um, a publicist like us on retainer throughout the year. Um, whereas if it's a, a smaller client who is going to, you know, maybe do an EP or, or an album and then do like a handful of tour dates uh, in spring and then maybe, you know, another handful in in fall kind of idea that would be definitely a different uh different campaign um usually much smaller a little more condensed uh and cheaper obviously mm -hmm. um but we also have different targets for each of those right i mean the big band we have targets like you know the uh, the globe and mail or you know cbcq or something like that whereas if it's a smaller artist uh, maybe our 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 goals are you know getting a couple things in exclaim or maybe you know um getting some college radio play that kind of thing Understood. So um, for the rest of this, let's keep it to that uh, like insular single campaign. So instead yeah. of an artist that would be able to put you on retainer, say it's a, an independent band, um, say, you know, third, second or third EP, uh, gained a bit of traction at the national level, not going mm -hmm. to, you know, where they're busy year round. Um, I don't want you to disclose anything you're not comfortable with. But as far as like what a campaign would cost in that sphere where it's you know a few months at a time there's an initial release uh and then the follow-up around that like give us a ballpark as to what folks might be able to expect yeah i mean there's different publicists who have different uh levels of what of what they charge um but i mean you'd be looking from most people i would think for a small campaign let's say around an ep a couple of tour dates that kind of thing like three to six months of a campaign You'd be looking to start around a thousand, I would say, mm -hmm. um, and it depends on what your goals are from there. If your goal is, you know, much much higher than that, and you want to try and, you know, achieve that, you know, that Globe and Mail feature in that six months, which is very tough to do. But if that's what you're what you're looking to do, and you're looking to hire a big gun in the publicity world, uh, it costs a little more. Bingo. Um, and you know what? I, I was going to ask, like, kind of softball it as to some of the measures of success, um, just so that we knew that going forward and could expand on it at the mm -hmm. end. But I think we'd be better served, actually, to hold that off, like trackers and indicators, sure. how you decide whether the campaign is ultimately successful. So, um, so yeah, here we go. Are you ready? Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think on Killbeat's site, or at least it used to, it basically said, you know, if you're interested in a campaign here's how you can hit us up but i remember it saying something and i'm uh trying to get this in a nutshell but basically like it's not for everybody we'll try and figure out if there's a good fit here and uh, and go forward from there so i guess the big yeah. question is like yeah 
we might be able to combine all of these in one actually and basically like what would be the decider for you uh, artist a artist b each reach out to you uh looking to hire you for a campaign what would the artist that you would jump on that's ready to go what does that look like versus an artist that you might say you know i, I think this needs to incubate a bit longer before we can effectively help you and and yeah, give you a return on what would be a relatively significant investment you know, honestly, uh, for us, it's we're entirely music based. Um, so, uh, I yeah, yeah, it, it's true. Like, I mean, you know, numbers make a difference, and yada yada yada. And whether you're, you know, a known artist and have toured and those kind of things, that makes a difference. But at the same time, too, we are entirely music based for us, and that's uh, we found success that way. Is that if we believe in the music and we think the music is good and the music can stand on its own. Uh, then we can find space for it and find people that are going to pay attention. Um, now, that being said, we uh, we don't always have a lot of space for uh, projects like that. So like budding projects that we really believe in that we would really like to see uh, grow. Um, because a lot of times we do have uh, standing engagements with different record labels and with different clients that we've had long term and we're, we're not the biggest company in the world, so we can only, you know, do so much in a, in a year. Um, but uh, it really, it comes down to the music. There's been some times where we've been sent a, a submission uh, via our website, uh, and they haven't played a heck of a lot uh, around, uh, around the country here and there. But the record is, just, you know, so good and the songwriting is so strong that um, if the person is ready to, to make a bigger push and is in a place to be ready to, you know, get out on the road, get out and do some stuff, it's something that we can start working with because the music is that strong. Oh, um, right on. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I guess that takes off the stage of the career question. Um, but to what to promote? I mean, you'd mentioned a couple of examples and I mean, from my perspective as the person that's receiving a lot of these, uh, uh, press releases, it typically falls between new album slash EP slash single, so new music to promote or tour. But, uh, I mean, we've seen all kinds of other things, charitable initiatives, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, so yeah. what outside of that, like outside of the typical album or and or tour cycle, uh, what are other things that an artist might consider hiring a publicist to, to do? Yeah, I mean, there's a typical album release, tours, um, videos, and, you know, singles and that kind of stuff. Um, I should say we we find that it's a little bit difficult uh, to uh, to get kind of traction and to get noticed on just you know one of those things alone. Um, if you're kind of beginning, you know, in the in the beginning stages of your career, um, so we try to encourage people to you know kind of make all those things kind of fall you know one in uh, one through another in a different line. So you know, a couple of videos, the EP, the tour, and then you know other initiatives as well throughout there. But um, so that like i mean that's ideally the biggest splash your name you know in the most places all at once so you know kind of you know can turn anywhere and see uh band a here there band b there and um it just kind of for us that's the best way to do it now that's not always <laughs> a person's ability like, you know we don't always have the ability to do all of those things within like a six month campaign right it's just mm -hmm. either financially not possible or we don't have the time or that kind of thing so there are different uh, uh different aspects that you can do kind of on your own i would say um you know in between so you know singles or videos and you know short tours and that kind of stuff that they happen you know kind of throughout um there i mean most publications most websites um have a masthead of some sort uh and someone to email for submissions and for those kind of things so uh, do some digging, find out who might be the person to contact at the, at that blog, at that newspaper, at that radio station uh, for for that. But now you're talking about things that are outside of that normal, you know, that normal, uh, what do we call it? Album cycle, I guess you could say, or outside yeah. of the norm anyway. Um, really what we're look, what you're looking for is anything with a good story or kind of a hook or, or a catch that can do something like that. So um, for example, um, let, let's say you're, Here's something that we did, um, this is years ago, actually, as a band out of Edmonton called the Provincial Archive. Uh, and they did a tour, which was, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't massive or anything like that. They weren't, you know, opening for anyone fantastic, but they decided to book shows in all of the provincial archives in every province across Canada. Uh, so they would play in the provincial archive. <laughs> and that's kind of, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a little funny, it's a little campy, but it's also, 
it's a bit of a hook that someone's you know interested in in, uh, in maybe talking about right because it's yeah. it's just that little bit of extra something that kind of propels you to the next why is this more important than the next band that's playing um well because you know here's a little hook thing that you know bumps it up just a little bit same can be said for uh there's a band um I'm trying to remember maybe it was said the whale uh, i'm gonna guess on that uh they did a bike tour um so they toured by bike up and down uh bc coast if i'm right i i could be wrong if that was if it was said the whale or not but anyway that was a couple of years ago as well too mm. um and here, here's the thing that uh wait, this wasn't uh this wasn't our idea but it was something that definitely uh, picked up uh, a traction anyway so the band royal canoe from winnipeg um and they're one of our clients and they um they have this uh this new album that came out and what they did for their fans in winnipeg is they delivered um the album to a uh, via vinyl uh to you know i think it was maybe 10 or 12 people um to have pre-album listening parties you know the week before the album came out and they delivered them via bike so they biked all around the city carrying LP copies of their uh, of their uh, of their record, and they showed up at people's houses, and people had you know like big parties set up uh, all ready to go for this listening party, and like you know banners and food and and the whole works, and the band biked around the city delivering the album, listening to a couple tracks at a time, and letting everyone kind of go nuts. And it was, I mean, it's a small thing, but uh, it got picked up on a bunch of different uh, like media sites, and uh, the Winnipeg Free Press did a big article about it, and I, it's a real small thing but as long as you're inventive and have something that's you, you know you can talk about uh it's it's gonna go uh far and wide as opposed to just doing you know just the regular here's an album or you know just the regular here's a song here's a video right so bingo uh, yeah it's i mean it it's a bit of it's a bit of creativity on your own part but uh it makes a huge difference nice um yeah on the side too i'm noticing again we've got a little bit of overlap here like i was gonna ask about when you're in or when an artist has engaged you basically like what you would go back to them with as far as their commitment to like helping you complete the campaign but uh yeah that's one we'll save too for uh for the artist sure. expectations there um well so i'm i'm interested now because you mentioned with killbeat it's all about the music or at least largely about the music um yeah yeah so we'll, Maybe some of this will uh, will just not land, considering the company. Well, but yeah, help, help well, us I can, out I can, here. I can explain a little bit more beyond that. Um, mm -hmm. So, kind of what, let's say, what we're looking for anyway for a band where the music is great uh, and we really want to hop on board and help out. Um, you know, maybe a band that's you know just kind of starting out. So another thing that we're looking for is uh, we're looking for uh, kind of a drive to to get beyond your your home circle um so if you're playing you know um shows in your in your home city in your hometown um and you've got some radio play there and those kind of things those are all great uh but i don't know that you need to hire a publicist at that point if you're not kind of ready to go beyond those borders so for for us uh it's really hard to uh, try and introduce a band to a larger audience in canada especially because canada is so massive uh if you know you're um going to be at the stage in your career where you're playing just around your around your city and around those kind of things so mm. um that's one thing that we're looking for um we're also looking for um i guess a bit of social media engagement uh on your behalf uh, as the artist so a lot of and this is the the sad um i go with backroom fact of this of <laughs> uh finding publicity uh, spots is that a lot of times that outlets uh, especially the bigger ones are looking for um a bit of an exchange so they would feature you in exchange for you featuring them on your social media so um good social media engagement uh with your fans and good content there uh goes a long way in helping you uh find you know bigger and better uh media outlets to to help to share your music mm -hmm. because you know that's the trade-off is you're sharing their brand as well too so it's a bit of um it's a bit of a trade-off that way but it is definitely one thing that we do kind of look for um However, social media engagement and that kind of thing doesn't fit everyone's brand as a musician. So, and we realize that, and it's a little bit tough. Some, you know, some bands uh, and some artists like to, um, you know, play the play the low key game and uh, and do things that way, which can work to some extent. I think worked a little bit better before social media was a giant thing. Um, you know, uh, um, artists like uh, uh, Hayden, who's actually a client of ours as well too. Right. Uh, you know, kind of just. 
uh, disappeared off the map for a little while, right? But it's that's his brand is that you know mystique songwriter, which works cool uh, for you know someone who's you know that great of a songwriter and has that you know kind of uh, panache to his background. But at the same time, too, um, it's not always awesome in this world right now if you're trying to start out. Um, I mean, there are still times where there are you know tastemakers out there and tastemaker blogs and these kind of things who find. Um, you know, certain songwriters and, and musicians and that kind of thing and champion them through their own, you know, natural discovery or through Spotify playlists or these kind of things. Right. And that that is a way where, you know, you can go from absolutely, you know, just playing in your basement to actually getting millions of streams on Spotify. That happens. Um, however, is there a predictable algorithm for that kind of thing at the moment? Not really. Uh, so <laughs> that's and that's not even I mean, that's not even something we really you know work into that much uh is tastemakers we do a little bit here and there but i mean not the you know zero to 100 explosion <laughs> artist that's kind of it's unpredictable and if someone could tell me how to figure out whether you know a tastemaker is going to pick up this artist and they're going to go to you know millions of streams on spotify overnight uh i would like to know uh because that would be fantastic for our business we'll talk after jared um... okay sounds good <laughs> uh well I guess I, a couple of these might be worth jumping into then. Um, sure, absolutely, yeah, like, yeah definitely. Uh, geography. So uh, some of this, this is solely from from my perspective, so I hope it's uh, it's not ignorant. But, I mean, looking at Kill Beat, at the artists, at the campaigns, I mean, very much a national publicist, coast to coast, across the board. Yes. Um, that's it. I can think of, of a handful that are better regionally, like uh, – and I, I won't name names in case it's a label that some of them uh, don't want, that they're, they're trying to get to that national level. But like I can think of some publicists that have a great roster, a great rapport with a lot of the industry in Atlantic Canada, which uh, you know itself can be a bit insular and, and microcosmic. Right. Same with Quebec, yeah. same with out west. So um, yeah, has it ever been the case where like someone's come to you and, and you and or Ken have, how do I say it, like suggested a, a different fit like something that's a bit more targeted to a, a smaller territory considering where a band is at absolutely yeah 100 percent uh that's uh that's definitely something so um each you know each region has their own little pocket right so mm. toronto in and of itself is its own region um and you can become very successful just playing in and around toronto um same for atlantic canada uh and and quebec as, as you mentioned um i mean uh, the prairies are a little bit different, uh, but uh, there's not as many people. And BC, uh, Vancouver is kind of the same thing, right? So um, that's definitely the case. If that's something that you're looking for, if you're looking for, you know, let's say Atlanta, Canada, lots of cities, right? Lots of opportunities to play, lots of different media outlets. Um, if that's something that you're looking for in there, then definitely we would uh, we would suggest going to a publicist that speci that specifically works in Atlanta, Canada, and specifically for. Uh, Quebec, Quebec is such a different market uh, than the rest of Canada in the music world um, that I definitely suggest that you hire a Quebec publicist. In fact, uh, a lot of our um, our larger clients who do um, national campaigns also hire a Quebec specific publicist because of how different the market is. Right. Um, so it is uh, it's definitely if you can afford <laughs> to hire multiple publicists for each of the different regions to, you know, people that specify in a certain region, absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, it all depends on what your what your focus is and what your goals are as an artist, right? So if you're if your goal is to do just the Toronto scene, there are lots of publicists who cover just the Toronto scene. Same for Quebec and same for Atlantic Canada. Um, and the, like, I mean, the bands that we're working with and the bands that we like to work with are kind of focusing on more of a national, um, a national scene approach to things. So tour dates across the country, uh, that kind of thing. Um, it's, I mean, I, I say tour dates all the time because a lot of it depends on that for us on the national campaign side. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's very hard for us to take, let's say a band from Halifax, who's uh, never played in Edmonton before to go to Edmonton media and say, Hey, listen to this band. Uh, they're fantastic. They're playing in Edmonton. Uh, and all Edmonton media says, Oh, that's cool. Uh, I've never heard of this band before and neither have any of my readers. Uh, so it's going to be tough for me to, you know, sell that space in my magazine, my newspaper, whatever, um, to a band that, you know, they've, no one's really ever heard of, but at the same time too, uh, it's not, it's important to, if you're, 
making your first steps out of, let's say, on a Halifax going on tour uh, across to Edmonton, if you even don't have a publicist or if you have a publicist that's trying to break ground for you in those markets, it's still very important to reach out to to those media partners, to the radio stations, to you know the local newspaper, because that's how they hear about you the first time around, right? Uh, you have to actually, you know, get into someone's uh, someone's inbox on or someone's uh, someone's uh, whatever call book to be heard of the first time, right? And then you know the next time around, um, you're just planted, kind of planting seeds the first time around. The next time around, you come back and you say the whatever the the radio host like, oh, yeah, I heard about this band before. And oh, yeah, they invited me out to their show and I checked it out uh, and it was pretty good. And oh, they're coming back again. OK, well, maybe I might talk about them now because this is something I'm familiar with now. And maybe a few more people are familiar with and maybe they've got a few more fans here. Um, so, I mean, it's all it's it's a lot of long game. Unfortunately, that's the uh, that's the world we live in is a lot of long game for those kind of things. But uh, it's also hard to get media traction if you're not in that city specifically in canada just because it's so massive um i hope that does that make sense oh totally and um and okay. yeah the, the last one before we're going to jump to a question period here uh and there's some great ones in the queue so thanks folks for uh, the okay. engagement and uh, if anyone else has something they want to ask feel free to hit us uh because we'll jump there in a second uh, but yeah the other one like i mentioned at the outset your client list is as diverse as they come um yeah but then again uh, like i Please correct me if I'm wrong. In fact, I'm hoping that you do. Uh, but like, I can't think of, you know, there's alt country artists that you've worked with as far as like mainstream country, um, you know, jazz, some of these more, I don't want to even say niche genres, but those that are a bit left of center as far as like having their own kind of industries, very insular around themselves. Um, all this to ask, like, has there ever been the case where even if the music is on point, uh, have you ever maybe not turn down a campaign, but try to defer someone towards a better fit based on genre or by extension, like overall brand? Uh, absolutely. Um, and that's, I mean, it's a bit of a, we, our company exists in a bit of a niche market. Um, so a lot of our clients kind of have a bit of a specific sound, I would say, regardless of genre. So um, let's take, for example, a band like um, Bad Bad Not Good, who we work with, who is, I mean, at their heart, a jazz band, um, really, uh, and they're a jazz instrumental band. But at the same time, too, they do collaborations with, oh, man, they've done uh, stuff with Snoop Dogg recently, um, you know, uh, Kei Trinata and a bunch of others. So they exist also in that hip hop world, right? Um, and they exist in kind of in both worlds uh, a little bit only you know one foot really in there mm -hmm. they're kind of a little bit a little they're a little bit unknown in both worlds but they also find a bit of a niche uh in the in the indie world as well too right, right. so you know there's a bunch of indie rockers that are that are into bad bad not good even though they're not an indie rock band specifically so um we do do that but then at the same time too uh, a lot of our you know let's say our clients who work in the maybe the alt country world um, so let's take, for example, a guy like Colin Linden, who is, um, um, he's the, uh, music director for the TV show in Nashville, uh, lives there pretty much full time, you know, phenomenal guitar player, very storied history, uh, and songwriter. Um, and his album is more of a traditional alt country album, but that's something that, uh, we definitely hop on board with because it's the, the, the songwriting is there, the story is there and the, um, but also the, I guess the, the, the selling point of the songwriting alone can go so far uh, to some of our, you know, some of the outlets that we work with, right? So like that's a, Colin is a guy that can find a place um, in, you know, in, let's, I'm going back to Edmonton, I don't know why, uh, Edmonton Journal uh, will, you know, do a thing on, uh, on Colin Linden um, and Beetroot out in Alberta and BC might do a thing on Colin Linden as will exclaim uh, and those kind of things. It's somebody, you know, he is not a good fit for, I mean, like the hype machine world, maybe, and that kind of thing. But uh, it's uh, it still has a lot of different places where we can put it because it has a lot of different fans and it's accessible beyond its genre. Yeah. Is I guess really, really the way to look at it, right? So that's kind of one of the things we we definitely look for as far as the brand and and genre goes. Um, but that being said, uh, there are some you know blues artists, blues proper artists who fit well into that genre. Uh, that we definitely suggest, yeah, there's blues publicists out there. Go to the blues publicist, you know, and there's um, there's hip hop publicists and those kind of things. So 
we kind of exist in a bit of a weird niche where um, the genre is a little transcendent, I guess, for for the artist. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, we do some proper, you know, proper folk albums. Um, there's a girl named uh, Steph Cameron who uh, released an album uh, that got long. Her first album got long listed for the Polaris Music Prize, her debut album, which is unheard of and fantastic. Um, but she is, I mean, her she sounds like uh, she sounds like '60s uh, beatnik folk. Uh, it's very proper in that genre. But the songwriting is so good that it becomes a little bit transcendent into you know other other um, genres and artists and stuff like that are you know taking notice. Bingo. Um... Okay, great stuff. Let's roll on. Some good okay. questions here. Uh, sure. In fact, there's quite a few. Let's sort of try and bang them off as quickly as we can. And I'll start with a, a straightforward one. Um, I was wanting to reply to Darcy in text, but I didn't want to be typing over you. Um, yeah, we were talking about tastemakers before. What's a what's a yep. tastemaker? Uh, yeah, tastemaker. Um, I guess tastemaker is kind of a bit of what why we can refer to them as a gatekeeper, uh, I suppose. So um, it used to be you know, old radio DJs, right? Where old radio DJs at the old rock stations would be like, oh yeah, this here's this brand new track from this band and it's going to be the best and you should hear it and it's the first spin here. And then from there, you know, oh, it break out in Philadelphia and then you go to Phoenix and then you go to, you know, and kind of, you know, grew up, blew up, um, I guess, kind of organically that way through radio waves. And now we're looking at tastemakers in the world of uh, music blogs. So if you've got like a... Um, a, a kind of an influential blogger who's going to be, you know, talking about something um, or talking about their favorite musician or that kind of thing that can be a tastemaker. Um, in some, in some respects, uh, Spotify playlists are tastemakers now. Um, and definitely people that you follow on, you know, on Spotify and, you know, Apple music, and those kind of places, those playlists are a bit of, uh, are also a tastemaker now. Uh, but at the same time too, like, I mean, you yourself can be a tastemaker for people in your, uh, in your own world. Right. So, I mean, I kind of tell people that sort of the way that I got into this job was uh, that I was always that person who was like, Hey, you should listen to this band. And now I just kind of get paid to do that for a living. Um, but that's like, I mean, if you're that person, uh, then you're kind of a tastemaker. If, you know, people trust your musical sensibility and you know what you're listening to and that kind of thing, uh, then you're a tastemaker as well. So they come in all different, you know, shapes and sizes, but uh, you know, some have, you know, 30 friends in their own uh, hometown who like, go to those people for musical recommendations uh, and some uh, have, you know, 40,000 followers on Twitter. And that person is also a tastemaker if they saying, yeah, I'm listening to this and it's fantastic and you should listen to it too. So, I mean, they're all over the place uh, and they're all in different genres, but uh, they definitely can make or break someone from zero to a hundred if it's in the right place. Um, or, you know, they can help bring uh, 10 more people out to your show. Nicely done. Um, yeah, and, and actually that leads beautifully into Dylan's question. Uh, in an industry that's, he says completely, and maybe just for posterity we'll say, mostly, largely shifted to digital and streaming. Uh, yeah. Great question. Uh, are publicists working to find and build relationships with these digital tastemakers, more specifically playlist curators? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Uh, um a, a little bit of it happens organically, depending on where it, on where it is and who the actual you know tastemaker and that kind of stuff is. Um, sometimes the, the person programming the playlist are just going to program what they like and nothing else, no matter what anyone says. So in that situation, you're not able to influence uh, anybody. However, um, I like I mean Spotify just uh, whatever they un unrolled their sponsored playlist section or sponsored content. I'm not sure what it's exactly what it's called, um, but right. it essentially it essentially is a pay for play, uh, you know, situation where major labels can uh, actively pay to get their artists on these playlists. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean that that is something that exists. Uh, I don't know if it's shady or not. Um, it uh, it definitely it's the old payola uh, example back and forth where you would pay a radio DJ to you know play your song. Um, if you've ever uh, you ever watch the TV show uh, Atlanta with uh, Donald Glover? The first episode is pretty much just that's payola in and all of itself paying to get your song on the radio. And that's a tastemaker as well, too. Uh, but at the same time, too, that's uh, banned. It's outlawed now. There's uh, laws against that kind of thing. So that doesn't happen anymore. But it seems like Spotify is finding a way to 
kind of go circumvent things. I'm not exactly sure how it's how it all works. And I think uh, because it's such a new market and such a gray area too, in some extent that we'll see how that all unrolls. But our publicists working to to do that. Uh, yes, a lot, a large part of that is uh, uh, is done by labels, uh, and the labels work kind of a lot more closely the to you know Spotify, to Apple Music, and that kind of thing than we as publicists do. Um, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely the case uh, that we're working towards it, um, and we do uh, definitely do work together with uh, Spotify on some things and with Apple Music on some things uh, directly. Um, and a lot of times we're looking for let's say uh beats one zane lowe's show um we get uh, you know world premieres on on beats one and that kind of thing right and so that's the first place we give a song to for its premiere there uh, and get that audience uh into it as well um and but at the same time too they kind of do the trade-off where beats one will then promote that artist um so um but a lot of i'm i'm gonna say you know 90 percent of music discovery right now is happening in the digital realm and so it's definitely a place that we are looking to and are working with actively for you know trying to find a place for music um so yeah you're right yes we are uh, i guess i could have answered that with just yes yeah. but uh <laughs> it took five minutes <laughs> sorry but but i guess but i guess it's both direct and indirect i mean uh, in a lot of cases and to keep using the term tastemaker i mean sure the people curating the playlists are often you know one of the early champions of an artist but i mean if you're doing your job properly and some of the blogs and other media outlets are picking this up. I mean, in a lot of cases, that's what funnels up uh, and Absolutely. earn Absolutely. the spot on the, the so Yeah, so even if you're not directly picking up the phone to call uh, one of these elite curators, uh, in a lot of cases, it's because of the publicity work and the fact that something's gaining traction elsewhere. Like, it, it's very cyclical uh, in that, you know, A doesn't necessarily yeah. have to come before B. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I mean, lar largely you're looking for uh, you're looking for you know your name to get uh, said enough times by so many people that it's impossible to ignore you. That's the yeah. that's the end goal, really. But that's the you're right. That's the that's the way to go. Bingo. Um, one more here, and as I mentioned, there's some more great questions yeah. in the queue. Uh, we'll jump into one more. We'll keep going, and if we uh, didn't get to yours, fear not, because uh, at the end we'll yeah. I'll, I don't know about chair, but I'm going to try to get through so that there's none left here. Um, <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a good one uh, because I know there's a lot of overlap here uh, with some firms that offer or quote unquote offer both services. But uh, yeah, what's the difference between a music publicist and a radio tracker? Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a different world altogether, right? So radio trackers and radio promoters... Um, they exist really only in that world uh, of radio, right? So they don't go beyond that. We uh, we exist in a, a bit of a world beyond that. So we do offer uh, radio tracking for college and uh, non-commercial radio as well as uh, CBC for ourselves. So those are just people that we worked with for a long time. Uh, we have good connections in those places and uh, and uh, we want you know those people to hear your music and share their music and share your music with the with the audience. Um, but at the same time, too, there are radio trackers who specifically, that's all they do. So they're working, you know, 24-7 around the clock uh, just with radio, um, college, or commercial radio. There are commercial uh, radio trackers as well. You generally have to pay a lot more for a commercial radio tracker or radio promoter than a college radio tracker. Um, but if that's where the target of your music is, and that's, you know, you find that that's where your audience is, is in the commercial radio world, then absolutely that's that's a worthwhile expense uh, if you can afford it, uh, because they are generally uh, pretty effective, um, depending on who you're hiring, obviously. But um, the most of the ones that we've worked with are really effective in doing what they do. Um, but what they're doing is um, they're really working together with the music directors of all the different radio stations um, and making sure that they've heard the track, you know, trying to make sure that they've added it to the ro the regular rotation or in the commercial world, adding it, you know, to uh, whatever the different playlists for the day and that kind of thing and adding it into uh, their uh, their own station and also making sure that it's it's getting played and trying to you know remind uh, the radio DJs and the radio hosts and that kind of stuff to oh yeah this this song was cool maybe we should play that um, and they're really just there all of the time making sure that that 
uh, that happens and making sure that those things get added. Really what you're, what you're paying for in that situation is you're paying for someone who has really good connections with the music directors um, who can help you stand out above the 30,000 other submissions that each radio station is getting per day uh, for, you know, people to play their music, right? So uh, it's really what you're paying for in that situation. And a lot of times in publicity is uh, the relationships that we already have with um, media outlets, with radio stations to try and help you rise above the, the rest anyway. Nice. Um, yeah, I guess this is a partial question here. Um, but to Madeline, Madeline had asked, like, we're talking about this in the context of the Canadian music landscape. And she's wondering mm -hmm. about uh, in the U.S. Um, I just wanted to say, Outside of a couple of geographic uh, specific things we mentioned, like a lot of this as far as what we're going to talk about in a moment, that being what's expected of the artist, what's expected from the publicist in one of these relationships, that's going to be uh, relatively universal. I think the big difference here is really just, you know, whereas in Canada, there's a handful of major markets, you know, maybe a two dozen kind of B markets, and uh, it's a lot easier to kind of manage that as one territory notwithstanding the landmass in the United States. Yeah, there are national publicists, I think like Mitch Schneider, for example, that would rep well, all the biggest artists you can think of sure. uh, who would handle that for the entire uh, U.S. But then I think, and please, Jared, if, uh, if you can correct me here, but in that case, like where we were talking about regional publicists, you'd have a lot more of that in the States uh, with folks that can help you on the regional level, on the state level, on the, uh, you know, Northwest, Eastern seaboard level. Yeah. There's just more tiers, but a lot of the, the topics here and the principles we're discussing will still apply. So uh, thanks for joining us and uh, yeah. let's roll on. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've got a few bullet points here, but I'll just kind of let you uh, take it over and you can touch on these. I'm sure there's others too, but uh, yeah, so you like the music, the artist check clears. Um, what's expected <laughs> of them? And not even so much expected like you have to do this or we're broken, but uh, you know, it's a synergistic relationship, um, synergetic relationship. I, knew, I don't know. Synergistic. Uh, synergistic. Let's roll with that. It's part of the vernacular now. Um, yeah, so tell us, like, when you're interfacing with a new client, what are the things you're telling them that they should be doing that's going to help you and basically enhance the effectiveness of the campaign? Yeah, um, so there's a few things uh, right off the bat. I'll start with just the very basics, uh, and that's um, a good bio uh, and press photos is we're going to start with the basics there. Mm -hmm. So a good bio, um, I mean, it's something that tells your story as to why you're an artist, uh, what you're you're doing what's going on with this you know new record or you know what's going on with your uh, music career at, at the moment um, and maybe talk about some of the you know your your past wins uh, maybe you went uh, you know toured with somebody or shared the stage with somebody or got nominated for an award for something or you know got some radio play somewhere um, but it also it really kind of focuses on you and your music uh, and what you're doing there now I always recommend to people to have someone else write their bio uh, when they're first starting out because writing your own bio is the hardest thing in the world to do so don't ever try and do it yourself well you can but just remember that uh someone else who can write who can you know look at you know objectively at, at your career uh with a couple of pointers from you obviously uh is going to have a much easier time of writing a bio for you uh, and it's one of the things that in the media world that people go to right away for information um so let's say you know um radio host is looking for something to talk about uh about you know oh we're going to enter this next track and talk about this band and what do we talk about well let's go to the bio and see what's going on so it's nice to keep that up to date uh first of all uh so that you have everyone has the same information um but also uh has you know nice points that people can can pull out of automatically and you know maybe just read over the radio or for uh, an example uh, if they're writing a um a newspaper article about you they can you know reference some of the points in your bio that they would pull into the into the article go out read a couple of bios from different artists um we've got a ton on our website um they're all just there on the artist page um get some ideas as to what people are doing lots of people have different approaches to it but yeah it's super super important um and it's a really basic thing that everyone should have one um, the next thing is uh, press photos. Uh, we kind of recommend that uh, you do two uh, press photos, one landscape, one portrait, and in color. Um, most people that are looking to republish your press, your press photo, whether that be online or in a magazine 
or that kind of thing um, are looking for color and are looking for an option. Um, now, if it's not in your brand to do color, uh, black and white still exists, but you're going to get asked for a color photo regardless, because uh, we always do. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but those are the two super basic things that you need uh, for media to really, you know, have the tools they need to start talking about you. Um, now, the next kind of things as far as assets and, you know, uh, that we go with a campaign anyway. So for us, uh, I'm just going to outline a basic um, album release campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would start, uh, it would take about, in, you know, a five to five to six month time, time frame. So let's say two months out from the album, we're going to announce the album. Um, and that's just kind of planting the seeds with the different, you know, media outlets and different radio stations and saying, oh, yeah, get ready. There's something new coming. Um, and then, you know, maybe a couple of weeks down the road, then we're going to launch. Uh, ideally, we'd like to release some, a video or something like that. Oh, sorry, I should say generally that album announced you release one of the songs. Um, just, you know, kind of get people to taste a little teaser as to what's coming. Um, and then we try to release at least one or two videos in between the announce and the actual album uh, launch because it kind of helps people to, you know, pick up traction, start uh, start building a little bit of steam going into the album release day. And then ideally you're touring around the album release as well too, to try and make a bigger splash as well. So that all kind of helps to um, work the story up into a uh, up into a, a bigger push for the tour dates for the album release. Um, and videos are, they're super important. Uh, they are kind of the, you know, the main thing right now. And they can take a lot of different shapes and forms. They can be official videos. Uh, they can be lyric videos, which don't get much, as much traction, but they still work. Uh, live videos, um, you know, kind of anything that, you know, really works uh, well on camera, I guess. But the point of that is that a lot of people, when let's say a blog or something like that is looking to write about you, they're also looking for some content for their own readers to share as well. So if they've got a new track that they can post, or if they've got a new video they can post in along with whatever they're writing about you, um, that helps them, uh, you know, that helps them to, you know, gain more readers for them as well too. make their read a little more engaging. And also they're more willing to pick you up as an artist. Um, so that's kind of the big thing for us too, is uh, videos are kind of key. Um, you don't have to have them. I'm not going to say you should have them because they're massively expensive to do incredibly well, but at the same time too, if you can find a way to do them cheap, absolutely. Nice. Um, yeah, and the level, or I'm oh, sorry, on the point of communication, uh, like what I'm wondering there is, you know, how quickly do you like people to be responding to emails? I mean, if the campaign's successful, if you send something out, say, uh, you know, 10 interview requests come back, uh, yeah, tell us about that rapport you want with the artist. Um, is it preferred or maybe that's not the right word, but maybe the difference between say working with a manager versus working with someone in the band uh, and tips right. on the how to make either of those more smooth. Like, yeah, tell us about the type of um, communicative relationship you want to have with the artist throughout the course of the campaign. Yeah. I mean, like um, our campaigns are kind of really, we work hand in hand with the artist or with the team or whatever, all the way throughout the, uh, throughout the campaign uh, from, from day one. So we're always trying to um, tackle, uh, I guess, whatever, or tack on whatever our um, publicity campaign initiatives are to try and help and support uh, whatever marketing campaign that you have in place for uh, for your album or for your tour or for whatever. Um, so one kind of plays into the next and they really help, you know, they support each other really in that situation. So being open and, and, um, and ready to talk about everything that's going on in your campaign and all of your marketing initiatives, all of the things that are going on is really gonna come in handy uh, for your publicist as well too. So making sure that they're in the know as to everything that's going on. And also from day one, you have a clear timeline and plan as to, what we're going to do, we're going to release this song, then this song, then this video, then um, albums out. And we, you know, we follow all that. If each person in the team or even just, you know, the publicist and the artists are following that campaign, um, then it's uh, that campaign timeline. Then it's really, you know, it becomes a lot easier to do things. It becomes a lot easier to plan things. Um, and let's say when, um, you know, interview requests come back and that kind of thing, or you're successful with a pitch, um, ideally uh, we get a little bit of lead time for those kind of things. So, uh, you know, check your email and answer your texts every once in a while. Uh, that's really nice. That's really nice to have. But at the same time, too, um, I, you just have to be uh, aware that there is someone working on your behalf uh, to try and help you out in your career. Uh, and so kind of keeping 
clear and, and quick communication with that person is gonna benefit you in the long run. Whereas, you know, you're not left to having someone um, waiting for waiting for an email back from you for four days. Well, you know, you've got a radio producer who's saying, okay, I filled the spot with someone else. I couldn't wait any, any longer to do that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's as quick as you can be and as clear and concise as you can be um, is gonna go a, a long way and is also gonna help, you know, um, your publicist out uh, quite a bit in helping you secure those kind of things. Bingo. Yeah, I guess in a lot of cases, like what's good for you is ultimately what's good for the band. So uh, absolutely, I like to think a lot of it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so flipping the table here. Uh, so for you guys, I, I guess we talked about this a bit earlier about tailored service, like to what degree mm -hmm. you would try and cater the the campaign and the follow up to a certain artist um, over another. Uh, yeah, was there any more to, yeah. to mention on that? No, I mean, well, Yes and no. Uh, I talked a little bit about how there's, uh, you know, there's a, a an audience for for each different band, and that's different from you know one to the next, from one sound to the next, one genre to the next, one artist to the next. Um, but at the same time, too, um, we do really approach that. So, for example, we've got a, an artist right now who is a, kind of like a soul artist, and we're like, oh man, where does you know where does soul fit in? Who would be interested in you know featuring a soul artist right now? Uh, so it's a bit, it's a bit tough. Like, I mean, where does that, what world does that fit in? And we try to, you know, work with all the different notes that we work with and maybe some that, you know, we haven't worked with. Maybe there's something new out there that, you know, would be a good place for, for a soul audience. Um, um, so, I mean, we do definitely work, to, um, work on that, um, and definitely take that into consideration. I think you have to, um, because I mean, if you're a hip hop artist and you're sending all your press releases to just country blogs, you're going to be pretty unsuccessful. Um, you know what I mean? So it, it definitely has to be tailored from, from day one, um, to what your audience is. Uh, and if your audience is older as well too, let's say you're in the, you know, the 40 plus crowd, um, maybe you're a folk artist and that kind of thing. Um, there's, you have no, no real, uh, you're not going to find much success hitting up the local hip hop radio station to play your music. Um, so do your research, uh, uh, as well too, if you're hitting up, um, people yourself, as to what they're actually doing um, and whether you might be a good fit for it. Um, so that's uh, it, it's something that we do. Um, and it's something that if you're doing your own publicity and you know trying to get your own seeds planted here and there that you should do as well too. Bingo. Um, yeah, so the, the question of follow up there, like we're talking about the campaign, when a press release goes out, you have a mailing list that you know this would hit the wire and go to all media across the board. Um, right. To what degree is it though where like you guys will identify outlets that like you know from experience there's a fit between the artists now like like to, to what degree is it where you'll be picking up the phone and and doing some of that follow up some of that more personal uh, outreach versus the mass messaging? Oh, we're doing that all the time. Um, I mean, that happens for us on a daily basis. Uh, but at the same time, too, uh, we kind of understand we kind of understand that a lot of the people we work with and a lot of the outlets that we work with are also getting you know a hundred thousand press releases a day too, and are getting pitched you know a hundred different times from a hundred different people. Um, and so we kind of uh, know already that um, who we're talking to might have a good fit, which you uh, talked about before. Um, but at the same time too, uh, if we're not getting a response or if we're not, you know, with our follow-up, let's say a couple days later or a week later or that kind of thing, whatever the timeline for that thing we're doing uh, is, if we're not getting a response after a couple of times, uh, um, it's probably not because our, maybe because the emails aren't getting open because they just have a million emails to open. Um, but it also might be just a bad time that we don't, uh, we can't foresee. Maybe there's something else going on you know, at the, uh, at the radio station, there's lots of times we set up things for news stations um, and all of a sudden they call back and say, oh, nope, something else came up, you know, uh, Prince Harry stole the car and now our news department's all featured that today. So, I mean, you know, those kind of things are, well, we pitched and we followed up and we did all our due diligence, but we couldn't stop a world event from happening. And unfortunately we're unsuccessful now. Um, so, but at the same time too, uh, the follow-up is kind of really, uh, that's really where you, you find your, your biggest successes anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, if you're doing publicity yourself, um, and you want to get, uh, you know, get to play on, on the radio station or that kind of thing where you come in, let's say your band is going to Calgary and you want to go play at, 
uh, the college radio station there or or CKUA who has a Calgary station now um, and you want to get played there and then so you email you know the people that are in charge of those kind of things and send one out and oh maybe you don't hear for a week um, follow up just kind of with a hey did you see this you know we're still interested in coming um, that kind of idea and if you follow up um, I'd say if, if you go more than two times following up and you haven't heard from heard from them back then yeah maybe it's time to you know move on to the next uh, uh, to the next um, outlet or the next radio station and see if they're interested. Um, but that's really in that follow-up is where you find success. Cause a lot of times people are seeing that first email and being like, Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the side and I'm going to think about that, uh, for later. And then, you know, a couple of days later you see someone follow up and you're like, right, right, right. I wanted to do something about that. And that's, you know, that's when you're, you, if for fishing terms, you can, you can set the hook. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's really where we find a lot of success is in the follow-up, but at the same time too, that's also where our major failures are because uh, we can follow up and we can pitch and pitch and pitch to some places, but uh, uh, ultimately it might not, uh, might not always be the best fit um, for reasons that we don't know. And once again, you've led me beautifully uh, into the last point here, which is actually basically our next slide. Um, but yeah, like measuring success. So I remember, uh, I think the first time that we met in person was in a, a music industry event, shout out to Manitoba Music. Um, January oh, yeah. Music Meeting 2016. Uh, obviously, we've been working together a lot before that because that follow-up yes. we were just talking about has led to many grand uh, late-night intimate phone calls. But um, yeah, outside yeah. of that, where I was going with this was um, there was a manager there who represents some pretty well-known Canadian acts uh, who had just kind of offhand and made the joke like they were looking to bring one of their artists whose household name in Canada over to the UK and he said, you know, we paid a couple grand to a publicist over there. And for whatever, like he was describing how the market seems to be a bit more vertical there. Um, like yeah. Just in how things kind of catch fire and work their way up. Anyway, he was like, so we started the campaign, we paid. And at the end, basically came back and nope, sorry, nothing happened. <laughs> and so it was like, he was joking that, you know, the P a publicist is sort of like the weatherman and that it's one of the few positions where you can come back completely empty handed. And that might not be any kind of indication that that person didn't do their job, didn't bust their ass. Sometimes it just doesn't work. So um, with that level of ambiguity there, um, yeah, talk to us about like, well, first off, maybe the question is, once a campaign is ended, do you deliver a report or any kind of summary to a client, either formally or informally? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what does that um, look like? I mean, well, I mean, that really what that looks like is it, uh, we are always informing um, our artists throughout the campaign as to when, you know, when and who is interested in doing something or, you know, when, um, when someone gets back to us. Uh, and a lot of times uh, some people get back to us and say, oh, this is cool. I just can't do anything about this right now while they're in town or, you know, while they're doing this. Um, and that, but that gives us a, an insight to, to follow up, you know, later on for the next thing, maybe the next video or maybe the next time around. Um, so we're always keeping track of, of those kind of things, people who are interested in people who are, you know, on the radar for being interested in, in your music. Um, but we also provide, you know, uh, full down uh, reports of the different, uh, all the different hits in the different markets that we've, uh, that we've worked on. Um, and, uh, and a list of, of all those people that, uh, that were interested in it. Um, we, we can, uh, people don't often, you know, request it, but we can, you know, give further analytics as to, you know, what kind of readership those different places uh, have. Um, but a lot of people aren't really that concerned about it. I can tell you that, um, you know, whatever exclaim gets however many hundred thousand people, you know, visiting the website per day. But uh, I probably can't break it down even further than that to tell you, yeah, this is how many people, uh, uh, you know, actually, you know, clicked on, uh, clicked on your song and then bought the record after that. Because, right. you know, those are, I mean, those are analytics that I don't have. Uh, I don't have access to on on that end. Um, it'd be nice to have, but uh, at the same time, too, a lot of people don't really care. Um, some people do um, for number crunching, but uh, we do. Uh, we can definitely offer um, those kind of things. Now, where I guess a lot of that comes in the marketing world. So those kind of analytics and that kind of stuff, stuff you're paying for. So let's say you're paying for Facebook ads, Google ads, those kind of things. Uh, you get you know, all those analytics back for you because computers are awesome and Google tells you what to do. Um, but at the same time too, that's something that you pay for. We don't, uh, we don't pay for any media hits. Um, we're all earned. So based on, you know, the story or the music alone. Um, so uh, we can't really offer a ton of 
crazy breakdown data for all these different things. Right. Um, but we do have, uh, we definitely do have link tracking and that kind of stuff. And we can tell you how many people, you know, opened, uh, opened the, you know, the email or opened the press release and we can tell you, you know, and you can extrapolate from that um, what percentage of, you know, successful you were uh, if you want that. Um, but again, like I said, a lot of people don't ask for it. However, we do have it. Um, so it's a, uh, it, 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 the breakdown can be enormous or the breakdown can just be like, you know what? People liked it. There were articles about you. Um, and how many people, you know, were affected by that article? I don't know. Um, but we can guess. Uh, and at the same time, too, you're probably not going to see um, tangible results. Let's say for your first uh, introductory campaign, you're probably not going to see, you know, all of a sudden 100 more people at your show if you're, you know, just starting out um, the first time around just because you got an article in, let's say, the Vancouver Sun did a little, you know, preview or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that that'll be, that's cool. Um, but at the same time, too, um, how many people did that translate into getting into, uh, you know, getting into the show at, um, you know, maybe five? I don't know. I don't know what the, what the thing is. However, the second time around, um, when you've got, you know, you've got an article in the Vancouver Sun, the Georgia Straits doing something, um, and, you know, some of the radio stations down there are picking up on it. At that point, um, that's when we start seeing, you know, big results in terms of um, ticket sales and that kind of stuff. And that's where uh, different marketing initiatives are also you know, coupled on top of that. Um, so it's the intro campaigns, the, those tangible measurable results are really kind of difficult uh, to, to do. Um, but at the same time too, once you, you know, build on that, once you keep on going and then second time around, you start seeing a little more growth and third time around, you start seeing a little more growth. Uh, that's the idea anyway. But again, like I said, it's, it's a bit of a long game as to the, um, you know, publicity. So, I mean, if you hire someone and pay them a couple thousand dollars to promote your record and you've never played uh, somewhere before, um, just know that, you know, it, that's a tough sell. Um, so it's a, it's a tough sell and you might, might be a little disappointed, but at the same time too, that's unfortunately the nature of the beast right now is the, the old, um, uh, there was an Ogilvy adage of, uh, you know, you can pay however much money you want for, advertising um uh, but only 50 percent of it works but you don't know which 50 percent right <laughs> so it's a little bit like that in publicity and it's entirely like that in, in advertising i used to work in advertising so i uh, i understand that side of things <laughs> yeah um you touched on it but like with knowing for next time again that's like the advantage of continuity of of working with Absolutely. the same publicist and like we're talking it's a lot of long game a lot of slow burn but uh like Jared said, you know, there's instances where someone will show interest. And even if that doesn't materialize in, uh, you know, an article, a hit this time, like, you know, that there's a seed planted there that is much easier to, uh, to take advantage of the next time around. Um, and if, if Jared, if one of these comes to mind for you, interrupt me, but on the direct and indirect benefits line there, what I specifically had in mind was, um, and I guess it's good that I'm talking here just so Jared doesn't have to brag, but uh, like a company <laughs> like Killbeat, uh, it's strange because it's almost like they're curators in themselves. I mean, Jared mentioned it's all about the music. They do have a certain sonic aesthetic that a lot of their clients fall into. And so as an extension of that, like for me, there are some cases where I've never heard of an artist. And yet if I see their name in the headline of a Killbeat music release, even if I don't jump on anything with that artist in my mind it's kind of elevated them to a certain level like so it, even if there's no you can't see anything tangible as a result of that release going out in a lot of cases there's that benefit of you know we talked about some of the bands on Killbeats roster well if you're a junior band much like say arts and crafts records i think where you know in a lot of cases even if you don't know that artist, there are people that trust that label so much that they'll buy anything that's on it because they, yeah, believe in their curative abilities. I find that to be the case with certain publicity companies, including Killbeat and a bunch of others I could name off. But uh, yeah, yeah are, are there any other like indirect benefits to, um, yeah, I, can't, I wonder. Anyway, let we can keep it at that. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it works. It, just, yeah. Just no, the silent, uh, silent seller there. Um, so there's a couple questions here. Uh, if anyone else has something, fire it at us, but we'll kind of close the queue off in a second. Um, Jared, your thoughts on Hype Machine and Submit Hub, uh, and I guess 
similar services. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> my thoughts. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a bit of a weird world. I mean, you're paying for submissions in some situations for some uh, some of those different um, websites, um, and you know it does it does work uh, for some people. Uh, sometimes, you know, the hype machine and the whatever submit hub and those kind of things uh, does find its way into a tastemaker blog uh, and does find its way onto a playlist of some sort. Um, now, again, that's one of those, uh, one of those kind of things where it's entirely unpredictable, right? As to who's going to click on it, when, what kind of mood they're in, um, yada, yada, yada. And at the same time too, you're also competing against thousands upon thousands of other people. Um, in a pretty, you know, general melting pot situation, um, we don't we don't specifically uh, work with uh, uh, work with that aspect. Like I mean, we I said before, we don't pay for anything. Uh, we go based on um, earned media alone, which is you know your story, your music, um, and try and find you know uh, connections through our relationships that we have. Um, but at the same time, too, this is it's a it's not a bad way. Uh, for someone uh, who doesn't have a publicist or someone who's, you know, uh, working in a genre that's maybe not, you know, um, doesn't have an outlet like a newspaper or a magazine or a radio station or something like that. Um, it is not a bad way for that person to try and do a little bit to try and get their, uh, their music to rise above the rest, right? Mm. Um, now, it's also a great way for people to make money off of uh, <laughs> off the internet, <laughs> uh, most of the people who are hosting these sites. Um, so. Uh, but at the same time, too, uh, it does work. I think you just have to realize where you are in your genre and where you are in your career uh, as to whether or not that's an expense that's worth it to you, uh, first of all, uh, and whether or not you can maybe approach um, some of those things independently. I know some whatever blogs and those kind of things work only specifically with a you know submit hub or that kind of idea. Um, so you're you know uh, out of luck if you want to try and approach them. But at the same time, too. Uh, it can it can definitely be worthwhile if you uh, if you fit the market for for what they're selling. Nice. Um, we were chatting about this. I guess we never um, got to the direct answer, uh, and I'm putting you on the spot again. So, do you prefer, in your experience, have you found it more effective one way or the other to deal with a band member? specifically or say a manager or you know a designated uh team member um i mean i don't have a preference it uh, really is all the artist preference uh a lot of times some artists prefer to just deal with uh, just a manager uh for example um and sometimes you know uh artists have managers specifically because they're not really you know business minded when it comes to the music or the marketing or the publicity or that kind of thing, right? And they have a manager specifically to do that for them. So thus we talk to the manager and the manager then interprets with the artist. But uh, there's a lot of times where we work with artists who are very savvy uh, when you know the world of business, publicity, marketing, those kind of things um, exist. Um, and it's really nice to, to deal with them. It's it's usually, you know, it takes one middle person out, but at the same time too, uh, it uh, it also helps talking to someone who understands what we're doing. Um, so if that person in the band understands what we're doing and understands what our game plan is and, and why they hired us in the first place, uh, that's really you know uh, really beneficial to us because it keeps those you know lines of communication open and so on and so forth. However, if it's you know you would like your manager to handle all that kind of thing, that's one hundred percent fine with me. I have <laughs> no problems dealing with uh, dealing with managers as well. We work with them all the time. Um, but at the same time, too, if you have, uh, let's say, you're a band who's hired a publicist and you don't have a manager, um, which is fine, you've, that's not a big problem. Um, whoever the person in your band is that's kind of the most business-minded or the most organized or that kind of thing, make sure it's that person who deals uh, with your publicist um, kind of on the regular basis and then maybe can relay that information to the rest of the band or that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's generally a lot easier to deal with one person in the band who can then disseminate the information or you know organize on their own on their own site because i mean i'm in a different city than the band is normally so it's uh it's tough to be able to you know be there present all the time to coordinate little things whereas one person who's business-minded can be able to uh, handle that aspect of it mm -hmm. uh, i guess kind of related to that um sure. and this is more of a curiosity than anything but like 
Has it ever been the case where you've worked with a band before where like you're setting up interviews, you're kind of the uh, conduit between media and artists where say the artist just hasn't lived up to their end, like ghosted on interviews, etc., to the point where it might reflect negatively on you or the firm? Like, Has that, that ever been an issue? And is that something that, you know, would uh, convince you not to work with a given artist again in the future? Um, it's never actually been an issue for us. Um, I mean, there's been situations where something like that has happened, um, and it's just a matter of uh, us or a manager or whatever communicating to the artist to say, yeah, look, this is something that you're that you're paying for is beneficial to you and so on and so forth. Um, uh, so we should do it. Um, and usually that's all it takes to, to, to solve that problem. So it's never really been a, ma a massive issue for us. However, I have heard stories from other people about <laughs> similar situations. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, it definitely, definitely can be one thing, but at the same time too, uh, it does definitely reflect badly on, uh, on us, your team, on you, uh, on everyone. Um, if you know, you've, uh, promised to do something and, uh, and haven't done it. I mean, that's, you know, I think a general, uh, rule in life, if you promise to do something and haven't done it and now you're not doing it, then you look bad. Uh, so <laughs> try not to do that. Uh, I guess <laughs> like not only in music, but in life, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're right. It, it it can it can make everyone look bad, uh, and at that time, you know, then you know the outlet is going to be hesitant the next time come around and say, oh yeah, well we tried to do something there, but you know they weren't reliable, and then now we weren't with we weren't with that company, and I'll be skeptical of that company and skeptical about that artist, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, just uh, uh, show up to things if you said you're going to be there. That's all. <laughs> um, there's one more question here, and I'm sorry to say, Jared, it's. Uh... Uh, maybe we can tag team this one, although uh, it, yeah, it's a bit uh, outside of the topic here, but we want to help okay. people out. Um, so the question is, can you comment on the artist that loves to do it all, all the jobs of their profession, sing, write, market, business manage, uh, book, I guess, publicity? Um, do they have to work with a team? Is it more reputable? If I can start here, I would say... I mean, at some stage, you're going to have to be all of these things when you're just starting out in most cases. Absolutely. I, yeah, you know your strengths or you have people close to you that can tell you your strengths if you're not very self-aware. Um, but I mean, like using publicity as, as an example, like Jared said, there are ways like you can dig up uh, who the contact is at certain outlets. You can find out which outlets might be interested in your project. If that's something that A, you're good at, B, you've got the time and resources to put into it, I mean, you might be able to do an effective job and save yourself a lot of money or at least just help kind of build up to the stage where you could take advantage of a national campaign um, mm -hmm. from someone like Kilby. Uh, but like on the back of that is, yeah, you have to know if you're doing a good job and you also just have to think of your time and the return on investment. Like we talked about how much a publicity campaign costs is you scouring the internet for what would really take days, if not weeks, to you know try and find a lot of this out rather than hand it over to someone who's got the mailing list, who's got the relationships with these contacts already, uh, you know, who's doing this and only this day in and day out. Um, yeah, in some cases, it's going to be mutually beneficial for you to instead of taking this on your own and spending so much more time, which of course is money, as they say, uh, than you would just to assign it to someone else. Yeah, that you're going to have to weigh that. To the question, is it more reputable? Um, I mean, I guess I said earlier that an artist with a campaign, you know, from a certain publicist does give them a bit of clout, uh, at least in my mind. I can think of a few artists whose wives or family members are their manager slash publicist who, uh, you know, might surprise you because there are probably some that you know very, very well. Um, so, yeah, I think with that one, it, it very much kind of comes down to knowing your own strengths and, and your own situation and trying to figure that out on the question of reputation. I can go either way, I think. Yeah. You want to add to that, I mean, Jared? Yeah, I think, I mean... Um the the thing you're working against anyway or the thing you're competing against is you're competing against people who have you know 10 15 years of relationships with uh whatever aspect of the of the music industry that you that you're working on and mm -hmm. it's entirely possible to build that yourself that's how everyone started um but generally keep in mind that everyone in the music industry is a specialist and there's not many generalists out there who cover 
all the different things who also have those relationships from you know 10 15 years or that kind of thing so that's keep in mind that's what you're competing against if you're trying to do it yourself um but can you do it yourself absolutely just know that it's a really long slow game and you will get that level of cloud or will you know eventually get that level of um uh, whatever uh, notability if you're doing it yourself and if you're playing all your cards right and yada 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 but the benefit of hiring someone else is that you're paying for that reputability and you're paying for that contact and that thing so you don't have to spend 15 years doing it yourself um because that's how long it can take uh to do that kind of thing i mean we've been a company since uh the uh, long before i worked for this company uh <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm gonna say that ken's probably been uh, been doing this for 15 20 years already um well, i've only been here for five or six now um and uh and i in, in in some situations um i mean i feel like it would be if there was uh if it was me on my own uh as opposed to you know uh company people um well it's largely just ken and i um but uh without those connections from you know 15 years from from 10 years uh it would be uh i i've still at six years would be um you know and a, a lot of a uh, upward <laughs> upward battle and uh and so it's it's really beneficial to be able to uh, have such resources at your disposal should you need it now if it's something you want to do and you want to spend 15 years doing everything all yourself and can do it and feel like that's great perfect go for it i uh, i will not hold you back from that nice um yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. A big thank you to Jared Falk, Killbeat Music, killbeatmusic.com. Um, as he mentioned, you can go there to check out, yeah, each artist that they're working with has a page where you can read the bio, you can check out what those publicity photos look like, um, which so we encourage you to sniff around a bit just so you know what you're getting into. On that note, a bit of self-promo, nwcwebinars.com, where you went to register for this one. We do have a previous session uh, called Who Are You and Why Should We Care? That's about writing an effective artist bio. Um, so we encourage you to check that out and a bunch of other good ones in there. Uh, as I mentioned, these three titles, again, not specific to publicity, but things that will um, yeah, kind of help you with your marketing, with your self-promotion, uh, musicbooksplus.com slash webinars. As this last slide says, uh, anyone that joined us, or I guess if you didn't, and you'll be hearing this later, but um, we will be sending a link to a recording of this session. If you missed a bit at the beginning, or if you want to share it with uh, um, your friends, anyone you think might get value from it, please do. I thought there was one other thing I wanted to let people know about. Um, but maybe that was it. Killbeatmusic.com. And uh, yeah, Jared, thank you very much. It was an absolute privilege having you. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It was great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll be back with more uh, of these down the road. Uh, NWCwebinars.com for all of the latest. And uh, we're going to sign off here. So thanks, everybody. We appreciate your time and help. You'll see a survey once the uh, session ends here. We appreciate your input, your feedback. It only helps us uh, get better and I guess deliver better content to you, which is what we're trying to do. So thank you, everybody, and uh, yeah, take care.